Sandfish. Deserts are some of the least hospitable places on Earth. Let's meet the desert animals that thrive in extreme conditions. Sandfish is one of them. Not actually a fish, but a lizard. The sandfish is a distinctive species of skink, native to desert environments of North Africa and Southwest Asia. Measuring 15 centimeters long with a tan color that assists the lizard in blending in with the desert, this delicate-looking reptile is actually an exceptional specimen of hardy wildlife and desert adaptation. The sandfish is named after its ability to actually swim through the desert sands, enabling efficient movement and apparently saving it from some of the harshest of the sun's rays by being in the sand rather than always on top of it. Able to travel under the sand at considerable speed, sandfish move their legs in a manner comparable to a human swimmer's crawl stroke as they maneuver and propel themselves among the grains. A lifestyle of sand swimming requires a further set of special adaptions to withstand its inherent liabilities. Sandfish have smooth, sparkling skin, with scales that shine and appear almost fish-like due to their gloss, minus any slime, of course, since reptiles boast dry skin. However, the toughness of their skin, hidden by its apparent delicacy, allows the sandfish to swish and swerve its way through highly abrasive, silica-based desert sands that would strip many other creatures of their protective covering in short order. Scales cover the ear openings, and transparent eyelid scales protect the sandfish's vision from the onslaught of grains. The sharp snout and countersunk jaw allow the animal to push forward into the sand while avoiding the harmful injection of sand grains during a movement. Mystery still surrounds some details of sandfish ecology, with more to be learned about their feeding habits. Roadrunner. Drinking urine as a last resort for survival may be well known as an option for humans in the desert, but the greater roadrunner of cartoon fame takes waste product-based survival to the next level in its curious approach to desert life. One of the roadrunner body's primary ways to tackle water conservation is sure to at once disgust and astound the naturalist. This animal uses water withdrawal and reabsorption from fecal waste. After consuming a meal, the roadrunner's digestive system retrieves water from the bird's feces as they sit in the excretory canals. Prior to elimination, the water is withdrawn through this advanced, unappetizing, and peculiar physiological process, and only then the feces are expelled. The absorption feat is accomplished through the villi projections in part of the intestinal tract, which absorb water through blood vessels. After absorption from the feces through the blood vessels, the water is transported from the villi into the bird's bloodstream. While this adaptation certainly aids survival, one spare tire may not be enough. So the Roadrunner has two more impressive hydration management adaptations. One is to hunt prey that provides water through tissue and blood after consumption. Another is to secrete excess salt through glands located above the bird's eyes. Such desalination glands are typically found in seabirds, not in land birds. Desert Tortoise While a vast range of shelled reptiles make their homes in wet forest environments, swamps, and the open oceans, colonians have also conquered the desert. Native to the deserts of the southwestern United States, the desert tortoise Gophorus agassiza and its close recently split relative Moravka's desert tortoise Gophorus moravkai without fail stand out as remarkable examples of adaptation to desert climes. While the animals look like the biological equivalent of rocks, they have a secret to survival hidden inside those hard, dry shells, exceptional water storage capacity. The desert tortoise has an impressive but peculiar physical adaptation that allows improved hydration management. This adaptation comes in the form of an oversized bladder that can carry extra water. In this specially evolved bladder, a desert tortoise can carry greater than 40% of its weight in urea, uric acid, nitrogen-based wastes, and water. In wet conditions, the tortoises excrete waste and drink extra water to store in their bladders. As a result, Alarming a desert tortoise may prove to be exceedingly dangerous to its survival, causing it to abandon its reserve of water due to fear-based urination. With their thick rear legs and flatter front feet, desert tortoises have an easier time walking in the sand. In fact, these strong feet are used to carry out an ingenious behavioral adaptation. Desert tortoises dig holes in the ground to catch rainwater before drinking and storing the water in their bladders. Sand cat. Tiny, sandy and feline to the fullest possible extent, the sand cat resembles a house cat and stands out as the only species of cat that can be correctly classified as a true desert dweller. The sand cat, Felis margarita, is native to North Africa, Southwest Asia, and Central Asia. 
At 24 to 30 centimeters tall, the sand cat weighs 1 to 3 kilograms and comes with a perfect suite of adaptations that make this animal uniquely capable of handling the challenges of desert life. Sand cats boast special padded paws covered with long, tough hairs that protect the cat's feet from hot sand and also help to support their weight among the shifting grains, preventing the cats from sinking. Extra large eyes aid the tan and reddish striped sand cat in spotting prey, while the large ears gather sound which does not carry as well in the dry desert environment. A thick coat plays a critical role in both insulating the feline from the hottest of summer conditions and protecting it from hypothermia during cold desert nights, as the hottest deserts are very cold due to the lack of moisture to retain heat. Several interesting physical and behavioral adaptations further define the unique life of sand cats. Equipped with dull claws that do not fully retract, sand cats creep along low to the ground, leaving barely a footprint and avoiding burns due to the thick fur on their feet. Burying themselves in the sand or hiding under a bush, the cats are secretive and scarce, presenting a challenge to the biologists willing to study them. Unfortunately, sand cats are classified as near-threatened due to increased predation, drought, habitat loss, and human persecution of these remarkable cousins of the ubiquitous domestic cat. Kenyan Sand Boa Boa constrictors are known as inhabitants of the rainforest, but the sand boa species are novel boas that have conquered the desert, rather than stick to more humid environments. One of the smallest species of boa in the world, the Kenyan sand boa, lives most of its life buried under the surface of desert sands or literally living under a rock. In the cool of the morning and evening when the harsh desert sunshine fades, the Kenyan sand boa emerges from its lair to track, subdue, suffocate, and finally consume its prey whole. It is the sand-dwelling lifestyle of this species that has given rise to some remarkable behavioral adaptations relating to mating and feeding as the snake interacts with its desert environment. The eyes and nostrils of the Kenyan sand boa are positioned on the head in a manner that limits intrusion of debris into these sensitive areas. Able to live beyond one year without food, this species uses the sand to its advantage while hunting in two ways. First, the sand boa lies under the sand, seizing prey as it moves past the hidden snake. Second, small prey may be killed by being dragged under the sand and suffocated in the fine grains before consumption. While feeding supports individual survival, mating promotes the survival of the species, and in this latter area, sand may get in the way. To reproduce, the necessarily persistent male sand bow may actually have to dig his female love interest out of the sand to gain the opportunity to mate with her. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.